Today, we're going to look at how to create the rotation transition effect in DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, first things first, I'm going to assume that there isn't any built-in camera rotation that comes with the footage, uh, which is really the worst case scenario here. I'm also going to assume we don't use the rotation transition that comes with DaVinci, which doesn't really give us a lot of flexibility to customize it um, to our liking. So now you're going to see that the footage itself uh, are just two videos that don't have a whole lot of movements. And the first thing we're going to do is to cut about one second of the second uh, clip and bring it on top of the first one, close the gap. And then I'm going to cut the first uh, clip so that the duration of it uh, is going to double. So overall, we have about two seconds of clip to work with here. Combine the two using a Fusion Clip, and then we're going to bring it to the Fusion page. Now, as you will see that uh, where the first video transitions to the second one is really about halfway through this entire clip, so which is what we wanted. Now, Media in 1 is the first video clip that we saw, and Media in 2 is actually the video clip that's on top of it. So with all that said, let's start building our effects by bringing transform nodes to both Media in 1 and Media in 2. So now in the first transform node, uh, what we're going to do is to find uh, the midpoint where the, uh, the first video transitions to the second, and then we're going to set a keyframe for the angle parameter, and we're gonna bring it all the way up to 180. So the idea is that we're gonna have two video clips uh, perform a complete 360 degree rotation. So now we're gonna come back to the first frame here, set a keyframe, and just bring it all the way down to zero, which is the default. So now as you see that when the first video clip rotates, it's doing that, it's doing the 180, but we also see the alpha channel being exposed. And the reason is because there isn't enough footage to cover that. So a solution is to go to the edge parameter, and I like mirror, but you can experiment with the others and see if it works for you. So now as you see that when a clip rotates, uh, the edge, the alpha channel is now covered. Now we're gonna come to the second transform node and then perform a similar operation. But instead of starting out with uh, zero, we're gonna start out with 180, set the keyframe, and we're gonna come all the way uh, to the end of the clip, set the keyframe, and change it to uh, 360. So now it's a complete 360 degree turn uh, with both clips combined. Now just change the edge parameter to mirror. So now you will see that with these two clips, uh, what we have here, uh, it's it's looking pretty good already. We have a pretty uh, good foundation uh, to uh, to build on. The next thing we're gonna do is to add more blur to the movement and also change the speed so that it's not as linear and it has more character. So to do that, we're gonna come back to the Fusion page. We're going to select the first transform node and we're going to uh, the settings page uh, that's on top. And then we're going to select motion blur. And once we select the motion blur setting, we can actually play with the parameters of motion blur so that either we can get more blur or less blur into the movement. And we're gonna do the same for the second transform node. Go to settings page, click motion blur, and we're going to add more blur into the movement. So you see that now it's looking more, uh, more realistic. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is go to spline editor. And this is where we're gonna change the speed. Uh, and we're going to select the angle parameter for the first transform and select the two, uh, two keyframes there. And then the idea here is that we want this video clip to start out really easy, nice and slow. And then we're going to have it really speed up towards the end. So it's gonna be really fast and aggressive towards the end, uh, towards the end of the clip. Um, and so you see that as we scroll through it, the clip speeds up much, much faster towards the end there. That's exactly what we want. And we're gonna go to the uh, same parameter and the second transform node and do similar thing here, but it's gonna be opposite of what we did earlier. So the idea is that for the second angle or the, for the second clip here, we want it to start out really fast, really aggressive, but then we want it to finish nice and slow. So overall, when we look at this entire clip, the speed is uh, is gonna be like this. It's gonna start out slow and it's gonna be really fast and it's gonna finish really slow. So let's go ahead and actually have a look at the finished effect. 
And at this point, guys, as you see that we've already successfully completed the uh, rotation transition effect in Fusion. It's looking really good. It has that blur and it's looking really smooth when one clip transitions into the other. Now, even though we're pretty much done at this point, we can still add more effects uh, to the rotation transition effect so that it looks even better. So we're going to take it back to the Fusion page and we're going to bring the directional blur node into the node system. And here in the directional blur, where it's going to really make a difference is really just towards the uh, midpoint of this entire uh, footage. Now we're going to change it to a dial uh, blur. And you see that as I adjust the angle uh, parameter, you can see now we have this really nice uh, blurred look. And as I adjust the length uh, parameter as well, it's going to create a nice blur in the same direction as our overall rotation. So it's going to look really smooth when one clip transitions to the other. And the parameter that we're actually going to play with is uh, going to be under the settings page. Uh, and we're going to uh, play with the blend, uh, blend parameter. So at the beginning and also the end of this clip, we don't really need this, need this effect. So it's really going to be uh, just halfway through um, this entire footage where we're going to see it. So under Spline Editor, uh, we're going to bring up all these keyframes and we're going to change the, uh, the speed for the first keyframe here. We're going to have it come in uh, nice and slow. And then for the last one, it's going to be nice and slow coming out. So we're going to really see this effect just towards the midpoint in this entire footage. Now, next thing we're going to do uh, is to add um, a zoom look, a zooming effect on top of this. So we're going to come to the size parameter in the first transform node. About halfway through it, we're going to bring it all the way up to, I would say, to about 2.33. So that's going to create a nice little zoomed in look. And then we're going to do the same thing for the second transform no node, but we're going to start out with um, 2.33, set a keyframe, and then towards the end there, we're going to bring it uh, back uh, to normal. So now we're going to come to the spline editor and we're going to adjust the speed. So very much like what we did earlier uh, with uh, the uh, uh, with the, the speed for uh, the, uh, the the rotation. Um, the idea here is that we want it to we don't want it to be just a linear move. So we want it to be nice and easy starting out. Then when it's going out, when it's coming out, it's going to be really fast. And we're going to do a similar thing for the second one, but it's going to be the opposite of what we just did. So now we're pretty much done. And let's come back and have a look at the finished uh, work. And you will see that now it's looking really good. It's not only smooth, but on top of that, we add a zoomed in effect uh, as well. Lastly, I just want to talk about the fact that if we don't use the edge parameter when we rotate the video clip um, to cover up the alpha channel, another approach is to really zoom into this existing clip. Um, so if it's zoomed in enough, it's going to cover all that stuff up. Now, this may not be the best approach, though, because the quality of the clip may be compromised a little. And also you're covering up a lot of the content that are within the uh, video. Uh, it is an option, nonetheless, if uh, this works better for you. So I hope this helps guys and I will see you next time.